morning, family and Facebook friends. I am Jade Pepper Gilbo, and I would like to welcome you today to your Tree Vine worship service. Amen. If this is your first time tuning in with us, we welcome you. Or if you are a returning friend of Tree Vine, we celebrate you. If you are a disciple of Tree Vine, we honor you. If you are listening to us via Facebook, please put a comment in the comment box telling us who you are, what city or state you are in. Let's center ourselves and prepare for a move of God in our worship service. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep those hands clapping. Let's give God some glory. Come on, let's give God some glory. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to worship. I don't know about you at home. Wherever you are, allow God just to touch you and bless you because we're going to have good, a good time over here. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Everybody say bless.
you. Because lady in the midnight hour, God, you will turn it around. God, you will turn it around. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Yes, he is. Oh, there's such an expectation, God. God, we pull on your anointing this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, we don't know what may have happened throughout the week for some people, but God, today we just need your presence. We need to be saturated with your glory, Jesus. Come on, let's lift up our hands and worship God. Come on, let him hear your worship this morning. Let him hear your worship this morning. Yes, So worthy, you're so worthy. Jesus, take your place. 
made a way. God, you're so worthy. of God right there. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
I read to you Joshua 14, uh, 24, 14, 15. May the Lord have a blessing upon the hearing, reading, and doing of his word. Morning, Trevine. I'm going to be coming to you from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the devil in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. I have read to you the six, uh, chapter 6, 10 through 18, book of Ephesians. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his mighty word. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Good and gracious God, God that can do anything, everything, and all things. We come to you this morning, Lord, asking you, God, to endow this holy place with your Holy Spirit, God. Father God, we come to you this morning, God, binding up, casting out, and rebuking any distraction may, that may come against us in the sanctuary or in our homes, God. God, we come to you this morning, God, asking for a worship, God, asking you to uh, let us, allow us, help us, convict us to be right in this place this morning, God. God, we pray that you send a word here that will heal, save, deliver, and set the captive free, God. God, we are here here this morning, God, calling on you, God, yearning for your presence this morning, Lord. God, we, we, we not only invite you into this place, God, but we welcome you into this place, God. God, we know that we cannot do anything without you, God. So God, as we go into worship this morning, God, be with us, God, in the sanctuary and in our homes, God, and wherever we may be listening to this worship service this morning, God. God, touch the speaker this morning, God. Put a hedge of protection around the speaker, Lord, so that no hurt, harm, or danger touches the speaker this morning, God. Father God, right now I pray for anybody who is sick in their body, God, who is sick in their mind, God, who is sick in their spirit, God, who is sick in their emotions, God. God, we bind up, we rebuke that demon or whatever it is that has, has your people captive, God. Has your people bound, God? God, we release, we loose them and we release them right now in the name of Jesus, God, so that they can walk in your will and your word today, Lord. God, send a word, send a word, send a word, God. Send a word, God. Send a word, God. That is special to each and every individual in and outside of True Church, God. Father God, we ask these things, God. Your precious son, Jesus, name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are thankful for each of you being here today and those that are on online and on Facebook. Thank you all for being here. It's a pleasure to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. We want to do some uh, some things real quickly. 
Um, you want to do the, the flat thing? Okay. Good morning, True Vine. Good morning. Amen. We just have wanted to um, show that we have received our plaque. It says, proud members of San Antonio Chambers of Commerce propelling business success. This is for True Vine Elevation Academy. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So we did receive our plaque. Also, we would like to do some presentations. Pastor Jeff had put this, has been on his heart and he had asked us if we could do that. Mother Green, we asked you to come up this way. She's like, what's going on? Um, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Sheila, be praying for them. She's not feeling well, but they're over our, our, um, our greeters, special, help, ministries. special ministries. And we want to be a blessing to our ushers today. So Mother Green, come up this way. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Let's clap for Mother Green. <laughs> So we are just wanted to be a blessing to Sister Patterson. They're always on their post. You're just going to pass them out. Sister Patterson, Sister Sammy, Brother Riley, Sister um, Cook, um, Cooks, and Brother Joshua. Amen. You're all getting a gift card for $25. Thank you for your faithfulness and coming and serving. It's a blessing to serve the people of God. And we thank you. And he just wants to say thank you so much. You he is just so proud of you. He was not able to be here, but we want to make sure that we mention this is something that has been on his heart to be able to do, that we are um, being able to be blessed. As you have been faithful in your giving, this is why we're able to do this. Amen. I just, we just want to echo, I was just checking to make sure everybody had one, that you keep on doing what you do so we can keep on doing what we do. Amen. And one of the things I love is that when you, we have not skipped the beat and our giving in spite of the pandemic. So we didn't have to come to ask you for money. We went into the bank, pulled out the gift cards and they were there. Yeah. This is a little way to show our appreciation because you don't have to be here. Yeah. You can be at home. And for those of you at home, this is not a knock against you. Please don't take it that way. But you all can be at home, yeah. but you chose to come out here and be part of this. And so we, we're Pastor Jeff and Pastor Sheila. We want to say thank you as well. Amen? Amen. All right. You wanna... Yes. Um, this is a certificate of appointment. Um, didn't I get opportunity to do it on last week, but we're going to do it today. And it says the age women, likewise, that they may be in behavior as become holiness, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. That's Titus 2, 3 through 7. So we have an appointment this morning. Um, and we are so excited for the woman of God of who she is. And I don't think it'd be any surprise as she was just elevated to be an elder. She is now appointed to us as an associate pastor, Doshi Piper of Associate Pastor of Education. Listen. <laughs> So she a pastor. Thank you. Oh, let me use the other mic. Let me get on. Let me let me get decent in the noise. She is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. When so all our virtual members and our new members, when you get the call for new members orientation, yes. I need for you to show up and be present. And for all, of, for all of those, all of you who really want to become a member of the body of Christ, who really want to be a baptized, born again believer, I will um, be getting with my bishop and my overseer to do the baptismal classes. And, and so this is uh, a, a notice that we are continuing to do the things that we have always been doing. And so I, I accept the appointment and I appreciate the honor. Thank you so much. We will, um, for those who didn't get a chance to see mentoring moments yesterday, Charles, uh, John Jenkins, Pastor Jen, John Jenkins, um, talked about how he does virtual baptisms. 
I said, we know why we can do that too. And his virtual membership. And his virtual membership. So we, we, we have some things to explore. So how we can move forward in this new reality. Yeah. It is what it is. And we got to either bend or break. So we're going to bend. Amen. Oh, okay. The gallivant is in the house. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. Although I understood he was here last week. I was, I was working last week. So the gallivant is going to lead us in, um, in uh, worship and giving. <laughs> let's, let's hear it for the gallivant. <laughs> Good morning, church. <laughs> Good morning, Survive. Our Facebook uh, family and friends. What time is it? Needs a mad time. That's right. This morning and every morning, every day, it's kingdom investment time. Now in this new reality, we have like a plethora of offering uh, opportunities, okay? <laughs> so let's read off these opportunities. Uh, you can give by texting 54244 and type TVC in the message. Hit the learn button on Facebook page. You can do cash app, do the money sign, True Vine SA. We still take checks, credit cards, and if you're in person, a little bit of cash. Okay, so let's get ready. The deacons are going to come by and do the uh, uh, offering here in church. And for those of you who are at home on Facebook, go ahead and use those, whichever one of those types that you will choose, but always give to the Lord. Also, offering and tithes. We want to be a 100% tithing church. 100%. Because it is a request that the Lord has made many years ago. So there's no reason for us not to do it now. So come on down. Everybody say bless. Amen. My needs are met. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was just looking on Facebook and seeing all the congratulations coming to Associate Pastor Doshi. Amen. And everyone's here. We praise God for the people of God. Amen. If you had not had a time to like and share this page, like and share, you know, and tag somebody, let them know that we are in service. We're about to hear the word of God. I tell you, the man of God has a word that will inspire, that will transform, that will impart the power of God into you as it comes forth. So prepare your hearts and minds, I tell you. Prepare your hearts and minds. As it says, pull on the, the, um, the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the God would use him, our own bishop, the set man of this house. Amen. Put your hands together for Bishop Trevor Alexander. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> love you, love you. And I praise God that we celebrated 33 years of happily being married. Glory to God. Hey, hey, hey. Amen. 
in 33 years, that must be I'm a keeper. <laughs> amen, amen. I want to give honor to God for the head of my life and to my three children, one of who's here, the other two is in Houston. And I, you heard I said my three children. That means they were good this week. When they act up, they're hers. Amen. So thank God for her, the Tara, Tasha, and Tanya. And I guess I got to get honor the, uh, you know, the nephew. Hi, the nephew. You've been good. You've been good this week. Hey, he, I, no, I'm not going to mess with you. I'm not going to mess with you. He's been good this week. He's been good. He was under the weather um, this week, but he's he's back in full bloom. Full bloom. What, 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 what today's show? Okay, this a little low. <laughs> he woke up on the last week talking about the adjective breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> it was still nighttime. Boy, <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Amen. But praise God. We have a wonderful relationship. And thank God for the relationship that we have. And thank God for each and, each and every single one of you. But this woman right here, this woman right here, she, she, she keeps me looking young, feeling young. Even though my body, she's trying to tell me otherwise, but she, she keeps me going. She's my energizer bunny. Amen. And um, y'all don't know this. I don't think they know. She's taking boxing classes. For who? <laughs> she, she said, oh, that's good. For whom? Because <laughs> she came in the other day and showed me, let me show you a combination. I'm like, okay, okay your strength is back. <laughs> I think she just low key want to hit on me. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Got boxing gloves and everything. She go tw is it twice a week, three, three times a week. So y'all pray for her. Most of all, pray for me. <laughs> pray. She's she's working strength in her arms. That's the excuse she's giving me. So, but it's it's good. It's all good. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Let's get to the word. I God just dropped this in my spirit just a few minutes ago. And I have not preached on this particular text in the years, years. And I guess this is going to be the anchor text. Um, for those of you who are from at home, and if those here, Revelation 19 and 10, uh, this is part one or part two message. Y'all may have heard me in the commercial. But this just see my spirit real heavy. So I want to read it real quick, then I get into our uh, passage that we're going to be preaching on, but this really lends itself to it. Revelation 19 and 10 says, and I fell at his feet and worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have this testimony of Jesus Christ. They have this testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Let me say that again. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I want to keep that before you because God has a word for us. And I believe it's a prophetic word. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And let me add one more thing. And the manifestation of the testimony of Jesus and the spirit of prophecy is that you do what he called you to do. Amen. All right. Amen. <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 16. Verse one, excuse me, verse 10 through 13. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 through 13. When you get there, you will read these words. Thus Jesse made his seven sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord have not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, all are, the, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remain as yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now that he was ruddy, bright eyes, and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. 
Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, that came upon David from this day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramoth. That is the word of God for the people of God. People say, thanks be unto God. You may be seated. You may be seated. This is, this is, this is, this is good stuff. And the Spirit of God came upon him after he was anointed. This is part one of, a, of the series that's going to be called From the Anointment to the Appointment. From the Anointment to the Appointment. For those of you who know me and been around with me longer than yesterday, y'all know I'm kind of drawn towards Moses and Peter. I've been drawn towards them ever since I got saved. I studied Peter, I studied Moses, and I, I, I see myself in both Peter and in Moses. At times, I have been reluctant to take leadership when God put leadership upon me. There's all types of excuses I use why I should not be in leadership positions. Um, I have been like Peter, quick to open my mouth and insert my foot, and I've gotten in trouble behind all of that. But lately in this season that I'm in, and I believe all of us are in this to a certain degree, I have been drawn towards David. And David fascinates me because David... Um, is an interesting character. Uh, he, he's a worshiper. He's all of that. He's, he's, he is a man after God's own heart. But David has some issues. Now, you may hear me oftentimes preach about when there's a flow in the text. As one who's a trained liturgist, I, I'm trained to look at flow, uh, how things, the rhythm of the text, if you will. It's like double Dutch. Y'all remember double Dutch? You, you, you're waiting for the, this, that happens in text. Oftentimes you read it, but it, I'm drawn to the flow. I'm drawn to the rhythm of the text. For example, in, in Psalms 23, they said, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he said, I shall not want. Now here's the rhythm of the text. If God is your shepherd, you are not going to want because the next part said, and he leads me. It is the duty of the shepherd to lead the sheep to green pastures so the, sh the sheep can survive. So here's the flow. The Lord is my shepherd. Then he takes you that he leads you. And because he's your shepherd and leading you, you have no want. Y'all see the flow? So there's a natural flow. There's a natural rhythm oftentimes in the text. And today we come to a flow that will prayerfully help us through some choppy waters as we deal with the topic for today, from the anointment to the appointment. For those of you who think you have been disqualified from the next thing that God has for you because of your past, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you. Let me draw your attention to David's life. The name David is mentioned well over 800 times in scripture. David is a man that had great success and great failures. David is marked with great dignity and great disappointment and disgrace. David is interesting. David is, is forever intertwined with his history, with Israel's history. You can't study David without understanding is Israel, and you can't study Israel without understanding David. They are intertwined. The name David means beloved, which I find interesting because before he gets anointed, all of his brothers is led before the prophet of God, and David is in the field tending sheep. The beloved one was not considered. That was an amen point, and y'all missed it. The beloved one, I, sometimes I'm so profound, I got to tell you I'm profound. The beloved one was not named or chosen, rather, to be um, paraded before the man of God. But he was in his assignment. He was in the field tending the sheep while his brothers were called to go before the man of God. David is interested. He is humble, but yet um, has some issues. He, he, he he's, he's, doesn't know it yet, but he's about to become king. Kingship is on him 
but he did not seek it. He, I, now, I, I, I'm going to surmise here because there's no way in scripture that I read that David prayed to God to become king. We know he wrote many Psalms, but somewhere in the line, God looked at him and said, this is him. I get to something where I think this is it. And so he has kingship on him. But David has some weakness. We know he's anointed to become king, and throughout his life, we see problems even as he is king. He enters into an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, right? He, he's involved in murder because he sends uh, Bathsheba's husband to the front line to be killed. He's a poor father. He, he uh, orders the, the census of Israel against God's wishes. He's full of pride. And then he's quick to judge. Uh, I got to hold on to that for a little while. He's quick to judge. When the young man that killed Saul came before jo uh, David, David ordered him executed for killing his enemy without giving him a chance to explain. Oh, yeah, yeah this, I, I was knocking on your door. You didn't, he was, you didn't see me coming. We got to be careful that we don't become so quick to judge that we execute the one that took care of our enemies by giving them a, a chance to explain what took place. I can't buy an amen this morning. Let me say this again. We got to be so quick to watch our tongue that we don't uh, uh, execute the one that took care of your enemy and execute him for doing what you should have done. That was David's weakness. But he's got some strength. Amen. He's faithful. He's bold. He's compassionate. He respects authority. He's repentant. And he's a worshiper. All right. He knows how to worship. He understands the rhythm of God. And he gets into God's face with passionate worship. He's about to become king. Doesn't know it. But all of his qualities, as in spite of his greatest faults, is that he knows how to worship. So David is about to become king. His brothers are paraded. They're not chosen, but God chose David. It's interesting to me that the man of God has to ask the father, do you have any more sons? And the father says, yeah, but there is one more. And he right there. I struggle with that part, and, and, and let me just say that sometimes as you read the flow of the text, there's tension in the text. And here's a tension for me. Wherever his brothers were, he called the brothers. But David was in, eye, in eyesight and was not called. Uh, rest with that for a moment. It was not as if he was out of sight, out of mind. He was in sight of his father, and his father did not consider him. Think about that for a moment. I'm, I'm going to slow it down. Sometimes you are right there and people look by you as if they don't see you, as if you don't matter, but you're the chosen one. <laughs> and sometimes you don't even know you're chosen. So you don't feel, you don't get a chance to feel some kind of way. I, yeah, yeah, okay. Have you ever felt some kind of way when you get in the presence of people and they look by you like you don't matter? And you want to say, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you understand the words that's coming out of my mouth? And they look like you. I don't care who you are. And so David didn't have an opportunity to feel some kind of way. May I suggest to you that, that, that David's father disqualified him because of his age. Sometimes we think because somebody's young, they can't do the job that they're anointed to do. Uh, I, I love what Jay, Jay, Jade is doing. Jade comes up and she's reading with such confidence. Next week, you're going to do another one, Jade. Not that one. You got, I got another one for you. She said, thank you. <laughs> you got, well, she said, thank you. <laughs> but what, she's not afraid to stand before the people because leadership is in her. And so 
David's father disqualified him because he was looking at the external appearance while God is seeking the internal manifestation of his external presence. Let me say it again. David's father was looking at the external appearance, but God is looking at the internal manifestation of his external presence. In other words, whatever you got going on in here, that's what God is looking for. And what is in here is going to come out out here. Well, I, I, y'all working me today. I, I get one amen. God looked at his brothers and did not see them. He didn't see them because he was not looking at them. He was looking what's inside of them. And what was inside of them was not qualified for what he was about to do. But when David came by, he looked inside of David and said, that's a man after my own heart. Because David knew how to get in the face of God. David knew how to get in the presence of God. And that's how God knows who you are. Oh, y'all missing me today. I'm knocking at your door. If God looks by you because you ain't been in him, you haven't been with him, you haven't been in his presence. But when you get in the presence of God, God has a way of knocking at your door and said, I have chosen you. Okay, let me tell you how David say, uh, how he says it in, in Samuel 16 and 7. Man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. God always examines who you are, not by your past, but what's inside your heart. Uh, People may look at you and say, look, may look and see you, what's lacking in you. But God know what he's put in you and whatever's lacking, he can make it up for you. You may be lacking the academic status. You may be lacking status. You may be lacking statue. You may be short. You may be tall. You may be low. You may be thick. Maybe short. Whatever you may be, God don't need that to qualify you, but he needs your heart. So David is chosen to be king. And after he's anointed king, he goes back to keep sheep. He's anointed to king to be king, then he goes back to keep sheep. Let me say that again for the Bible scholars. He's anointed to become king. A king belongs in a palace, but he goes back to keep sheep. He's chosen by God. God said, arise, he's the one. He's anointed. He's separated by God to be used by God. And he goes back to keep sheep. Now, in chapter 16, he's anointed. He's separated. In chapter 17, he's back in the field. This is tension for me. Because once you're anointed to go someplace... My theology tells me that God don't take you back. So may I suggest to you that he didn't just take him back to anywhere. He took him back to pasture time. Pasture time. He comes out of the pasture to go back to the pasture. He comes from and becomes anointed to go back to where he came from. My theological construct says, that's not how God works. Because usually when God calls you from and takes you to, it's better than where he called you from. But in David's case, he takes him from, calls him, takes him from, and takes him back to where he called him from. When Elisha, Elijah, covered Elisha with his mantle, Elisha went home, kids his family, and went to the school of prophet. So he went from one location to a greater location. But in David's case, it looked like David regressed instead of progressing. <sighs> My friends, sometimes when it looks like God is taking you back, you're really stepping into his plans for your future progress. God never makes a mistake when he puts a plan on your life. Sometimes that plan looks like it ain't coming together. Sometimes that plan looks mighty slow. Sometimes that plan looks like nothing like what God showed you. And it looks like you're stepping back, but you're really stepping forward. I hear Jeremiah say, for the plans, for a thought that I have towards you, they're good and not evil. Right? And what is the end? He's there 
to give you an expected end in the midst of your problems. In the midst of the, reg- of, of, of the plans look like you're regressing, God's plan is always to take you forward. Okay, so let me, let me look at it. So in between where you are and where you're going, you have to spend some pasture time. Now, I know I got an accent, so let me make sure you hear what, I, what I'm saying. I'm not saying pastor time or past your time. It's pasture time. I want to make sure you understand. It's not just the past the time. And you are not past your time. It's pasture time. So in between the anointment and the appointment, you have to endure the pasture time. And, uh, and so and I, I'm here to make sure you understand that where you are right now may feel like you're in a rut, may feel like you ain't moving forward, may feel like ain't, things ain't clicking, things ain't getting together. You're in pasture time. Uh, God does some of his best work in pasture time. Let me dig a little further. God had a conversation with Noah. said, so Noah, you, got, you are so critical to me that in the reconstruction of the world, I'm going to cause you to be my point of contact. I need you to build an ark, Noah. And when you build this ark, I'm going to have all the animals come in two by two. Noah didn't know it when he said yes, because Noah became the first zo- zoologist. He is the zo- zoologist. Let me try to make it clear. And in the zoo, a floating zoo, Noah and his sons had to clean out the ark. That all the waste material that's in at the bottom of the ark, the one that's been chosen in the reconstruction of the world is cleaning out the muck. That's called pasture time. Moses, 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 a peculiar man, pulled out of the river. He's destined to save his people. Kills an Egyptian. Goes on a run. And in the run, he becomes a shepherd. And one day on the backside of the mountain, he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed. He has a conversation with God in this bush. Has this encounter, and God said, you got to go back to deliver my people. Moses spent 40 years on the backside of the, of the, of the uh, mountain, tending sheep. Now he gets his marching order, and those 40 years is called pasture time. Peter. Peter is chosen to be the first pope in Rome. He's called to be a fisher of men. Now, y'all know Peter. Peter de- denied Jesus three times. Stands before a fire. And somebody says, I'm sure you one of them disciples. Peter said, not me. He said, you sound like one of those. He's called out in front of the fire for being an imposter. But when the, at, at the resurrection of Jesus, the angel said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Peter is invited back into the fold. And when Peter heard the cock crow three times, the scripture said, and Peter wept bitterly. That's called pasture time. Let me give you Alexander definition 101 of what pasture time is. Pasture time is your season of development. Pasture time is where God gets your attention. Pasture time is where you are alone with God and you can hear God and God can hear you. Pastor time means you got God has your undivided attention. Pastor time is the season where God teaches you lesson like only God can teach you. Pastor time is a time that God is getting ready for your next assignment and you don't even know where it is or what you're going to be doing, but you're getting ready for something you don't know what about. That's pastor time. Pastor time says you are getting ready to face your giants and become a giant killer. Pastor time says that that you're getting ready to go through the valley of the shadow of death, but you're not going to stop there. Pastor time says your enemies, your frenemies, and your haters are coming at you, but you're ready to stand because God created you for such a time as this, and you know something that the enemy don't know. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and that's called pasture time. Pasture 
pasture time is when God teaches us how to handle our tears. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That's pasture time. Pastor time is where is where many of us are right now. And pastor time is where you got spent some time alone with God and with you. Pastor time says the mantle that you're about to carry is so heavy. And if you don't spend some time in the pasture, you'll never be able to carry the mantle. Pastor time says you may fail externally, but keep your internal organ connected to me. Uh, pastor time says you may fail at Bathsheba. You may fail with the loyalty of Uriah, but if you stay in the pasture, no matter how much you fail, I got your back. Pastor time says, don't worry what's going on around you. I got you. Yes. Pastor time says, guess what? I feel like giving up right now because it doesn't look like it's coming together. But God said, you allow me to feed you in this pasture. If you allow me to lead you in this pasture, I will take you from green grass to green grass to green grass. And even if it looks like you're going down, I still got you. Pastor time. Pastor time says, I need to trust him when I can't trace him. Listen, I'm going to stop right there because I want to pick up some next week. So if I put my notes over there, the temptation to look into it won't be there. But listen, in pastor time, when your enemies and your foes come to eat up your flesh, they stumble and fall. But God says they can't touch you in the pasture because in the pasture is my time with you. And I will protect you. I got a bubble around you. And this bubble can nothing penetrate what this good shepherd don't want to penetrate. Y'all missing me. Can nothing penetrate what God don't want to penetrate. So the enemy be chopping at their teeth, trying to get at you, and you stay in your pastor time. Let me say one more thing before I, 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 I end. In the pastor time, I never saw David complain about where he was. <laughs> Have you seen? I read it. Trust me, I was looking. I was looking. Surely, if you're anointed to become king, and you go back to where you came from, you got to be disgruntled. You got to be disgruntled. Because I came out of the pasture. You anointed me to be in the palace. I got to go back to the sheep. Sheep stink. Palace smells good. But David never complained about where he was and where God had him because I think there was something in David that understood as a shepherd that the pasture that God had him in is the place of development. Amen. Amen. So here we are right now. True Vine Elevation Academy. We've meeting with people. Yes, we are. Getting good advice. We're following, we're following through. But I still haven't seen the type of money we need. We got haters, y'all. I, 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 trust me. I didn't know that we had haters in the body of Christ that hated what we're trying to do. People don't want to see it succeed. And it's not even hurting them. Not taking nothing away from them. But I'm understanding where God has us. It's our pasture time. God is developing us. So when we get to where we need to be, we're not trying to be ready. We will be ready to make a difference as soon as we get to where we are. Overseers is preparing for the future and we don't have no children yet. We don't have the building yet. But we got a plaque. We got a, a mission to the ACSI. We got all these things ready. So when we open the door, the plaque going to be on the wall. The stick is going to be on the door. We're going to be accredited. Why? Because in this pasture time, 
We are preparing ourselves for such a time as this. We are not discouraged. We are encouraged because God has us where we need to be. And when the door opens, we can step through the door with confidence that we have been prepared in the pasture. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you didn't get that word today, you'll get it next week. You have been cleared to, and declared to go forth in the plan that God has for you. You're in the pasture right now. And maybe not your season right now. But keep doing the things you need to do. So when that door opens, you're ready to step through it. Interviews after interviews. No callback. Because that's not the door that God wants you in. Keep going through the interviews. Because you're polishing your interview skills. But when that right door opens, you will be a yes to go because you've been in the pasture and everything that looks like is a denial is where you're set up for a comeback. <sighs> Let me say that again. Everything that looks like a denial is really a setup for a comeback. Some of you need to come back from where you've been. You've been up here, now you've been down here, but God said, I took you from up here because you needed to be developed in the pasture so I can take you back to where you really need to be. I'm done. That was a word for somebody because that was not in my notes. You may have looked like you stepped down, but that step down is really a step up because God is taking you, but you're in your pasture time. Next week, I'm going to talk about trusting God, killing your giant, and strengthen your brothers. I'm done. Trusting God, killing your giants, and um, strengthen your brothers. All right, come on. <laughs> Praise God. That word, my goodness, it's our season, and we want to make sure that we are doing it what God has called to do in the pasture, P-A-S-T-U-R. You think about the sheep, they eat in the pasture where they're getting their grain and they're sleeping. So God is wanting to speak to us. Um, as Bishop and I were coming to service this morning and I was just sharing with him, you know, um, speaking in our, 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 our heavenly language, um, sometimes we need to just you know, in the mornings, whenever through the day, just be just speaking. It builds you up in your innermost. When you begin to speak in your spiritual language, the things that come at you, the, the swords, the javelins, the people that say it cannot happen when you're built up in God. So when those things come, you know, what? it just flies right off. It just rolls off like the water off a duck's back because you have built yourself up. As we are in this season, God is wanting us to desperately seek him even more and more. Our prayer time. If you're not spending some time with the Lord, Bishop was reminding us, we have to spend time in this pasture season to spend time with him. Talk and then listen to what he's saying to you today that's watching with us and that is here. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord today, today is your day. Harden not your heart, the word of God says. He loves you. You have an opportunity to say, God, I need you to live inside of me, to live in my spirit, to, to guide me. And if that's you today, if you just place in there that you're wanting to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, we will have someone to meet out to you. And as we get ready to pray, we are praying for you because when you say yes to God, God has a way of giving you favor, opening up doors, giving you the stamina, the strength to continue to walk through the things that you're going through, to let you know that you are not alone, but God is with you. Praise God. God just impressed in my heart to anoint you all. Because David was anointed for his next level and appointed. But there's an in-between. I need to anoint you for the in-between. Because the in-between is where you're going to fail if you give in to it. But this pastor is the in-between. Don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as a step towards your future. So those who want to be anointed, just come on.
And as he's doing that and they're walking around and Bishop is anointing, we symbolically anoint you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the word of God, the presence of the God. Father God, we thank you that you live and dwell within our spirits, God, that you give us strength, the stamina, the, um, the fortitude, God, to continue, the resilience, God, that we cannot do this within our own, God, but we need you. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts and our lives right now in the name of Jesus, God. Those who are watching virtually, God, let them know that your presence is with them as they yield themselves to you wherever they may be in their homes, if they're driving, sitting at the table, God, they're saying, yes, God, anoint me with your presence. The more of you, God, I need to be filled to overflowing, God, the abundance of your anointing, the glory to God. Hallelujah. Ha, glory. The joy of the Lord will be your strength when you're going through the troubled waters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You can speak to the dead things in your life and say, you shall live and not die because I spent some time with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that will lead you and guide you to all truth and righteousness. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for your presence, God, as you're going through your school on your in the marketplace wherever you are take the lord along with you everywhere you go you're gonna need him you're gonna need him you're gonna need him thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus as we're going through the different things on our job the different things that we're feeling in the COVID, we thank you for the presence of the lord we're praying for those who are sick in your body right now we lift them up to you right now father god in the name of jesus we know some people that are online right now that are going through COVID, that are going through mal migraine headaches god or are having pains in their bodies god but we thank you you said by your stripes are we healed thank you for healing God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for healing mind, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. We want to be a healthy church. We want to be healthy and whole in you. God, we so we say, have your way. We magnify you, God, for those who, who've given their life to you today, who said yes to you, God, who's reclaimed yourself, said, I no longer want to walk alone, but I need God to walk alongside me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your presence, God, and we love you and your will shall be accomplished. And we say, I do in Jesus' name. It is well. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Glory to God. Glory! Thank you, Jesus. There's this song that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Do you thank God for saving you today? If you do, make sure you share that. Don't hold it to yourself. Let someone know your neighbor, your coworkers. Let them know that God saved you and let them know how God has made a difference in your life. So they'll want to make a difference. Join us again as our Praise him is coming. Our next Sunday at 1030 at True Vine, we believe in doing what God has called us to do. We are a church that is word fed and spirit led. We are people of excellence and we do welcome you in the spirit of excellence. The Lord bless you. to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious on to you. sing 
and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And we sing Amen. 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 And we sing to go. God bless you.